Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We all must have seen a voltmeter or an ammeter. There's a pretty good chance that you would have seen them in the labs in our college to measure voltage and current. The pins on these instruments indicate the measured value by pointing on the scale. But how does this precise measurement occur? We will learn about that in this video. An indicating instrument is based on three torques acting upon it to give us the accurate measurements. These are deflecting torque, control torque, and damping torque. The voltmeter measures the voltage. It is connected in parallel with the resistance, and we know that according to Ohm's law, current is directly proportional to voltage. Thus, as current flows through the circuit, an equivalent deflection is observed in the pointer. The twisting force that occurs, which causes the movement of the pointer, is known as deflecting torque. It is produced by electromagnetic action of the current in the coil, which makes the spindle move. But how do you think the needle stops moving? Now, we know that a body in motion will continue to move unless and until it is stopped by another opposite force. The other force that acts opposite to the deflecting torque to stop the needle from completely moving towards the other direction is termed as the control torque. A steady state is achieved when the deflecting torque is balanced by the control torque. Control torque can be applied to the indicating instrument in two ways spring control torque and a gravity control torque. In spring control, two springs are wound around the spindle in the opposite direction and the pointer is attached to the spindle. These springs are conducting but non-magnetic in nature and are made of phosphor bronze material. Now, as the pointer moves, the springs get twisted in the opposite direction. This leads to a force being developed opposite to the deflection torque. This makes the spring stop and prevent it from moving completely in the other direction. Control torque is denoted by TC. And for a spring control, TC is directly proportional to the angle by which the pointer has moved. That is, the more the pointer moves, an equal amount of restoring force is acted on it. Next, we have the gravity control torque. In this, the pointer is suspended with a small weight termed the control weight. Due to gravitational pull, a control torque opposite to the deflection torque is produced whenever the pointer moves from its initial position. On resolving the components, we get that TC is directly proportional to sine theta, where theta is the angle by which the pointer has moved from the initial zero position and TC is the control torque. The sine theta component is used because if we look at this image, the deflecting torque moves the needle towards the right, and the control torque acts in the opposite direction from the left. The component on the right side is sine theta, and hence the sine theta component is considered. Thus, in spring control, TC is directly proportional to theta, and in gravitational control, TC is directly proportional to sine theta. Now, moving to the third and final torque on the pointer, which is the damping torque. Now, when the controlling torque and deflecting torque acts on the pointer, due to inertia, the pointer will oscillate before it comes to rest. These oscillations are damped with the help of damping torque. Damping torque can be provided by air friction damping, eddy current damping, and fluid friction damping. Let's learn about each of them one by one. Firstly, we have air friction damping. In air friction damping, the spindle is attached to a piston. The piston is usually made of aluminium and placed inside an air chamber. When the needle moves towards the right, the piston is pushed inside, since this decreases the volume inside the chamber. Now, as the volume decreases, the pressure increases. This increased pressure inside the chamber will tend to push the piston outwards and opposes the movement of the pointer, thus creating the damping torque and preventing the needle from oscillating. Next, we have eddy current damping. In eddy current damping, the eddy current principle is used. Here, a disc is placed in between a magnetic field. When the pointer moves, it will lead to the movement of the disc placed between the magnetic field. Now, as the disc moves, it will cut the magnetic field between which it was placed. This will lead to a current being induced in the disc termed as eddy currents. Now, by Lenz's law, this induced current will oppose the current by which it was produced which will in turn restrict the movement of the pointer. This will lead to preventing oscillations in the pointer and the required damping torque will be achieved. Now finally, we have the fluid friction damping. There are two images here. The image on the left has a spindle which is connected to a disc. The image on the right has the spindle connected to the veins. They are placed in oil which should completely submerge the veins or the disc. As the pointer moves, a friction drag is produced. This restricts the movement of the pointer. Thus, we can arrive at the following conclusions. The deflecting torque gives the initial force required for the movement of the pointer. The control torque restricts the movement so that the pointer stops at the measured value. 
and the damping torque is given to damp the oscillations in the pointer. With this, we will end our video. See you in the next one. Until then, bye.